It's finally time to finish up the crafting. I'll start by opening the solution in Visual Studio. And the first class we're going to modify is the item factory class. Right now for the recipes, we have the ingredients and the output items properties, which contain item quantity objects. Those only have the item ID in them, but there are times we're going to want to display the name from the item ID. We could do that by instantiating a game item object of that item ID and getting the name from that. But I instead added this helper function to item factory on line 62 to 65. It's a static function called item name. We pass in an item of type ID. It looks in the standard game items list, finds the first object that matches the ID type and returns its name. We have this single question mark here to handle any null situations in case we pass in an item ID where we don't have a corresponding object in the standard game items, which we never should do, but this is just to be safe. This will, this question mark will say, if everything in front of this evaluates to null, then don't try to get the name property because we don't have an object. We have null, but if all of this first or default returns an object, then go ahead and get the name property. This will prevent us from getting a null reference exception. And this double question mark after this whole statement of getting the name says, if this result is null, so if our first or default did not find an item, then the first section of line 64 would return a null. It wouldn't try to get the name, but it would still return a null object. These double question marks are going to check and say, if it's a null, return an empty string. So now we have a static function where we can pass in an item type ID and get the item's name or an empty string if it's a bad item type ID. Step two is to modify the living entity class in engine models. This is the base class for any, anything that's alive, the player, the monsters, and the traders. Crafting deals a lot with the inventory. We need to check to see if the player has all the required ingredients in their inventory. And then if they do, we need to remove those items from the player's inventory and add the output items to the player's inventory. So we're doing a lot of work with the inventory and living entity. Since that is the class that has our inventory properties on line 112, 114, 116 and 119, we have our inventory, grouped inventory, weapons and consumables. This is where we should have all of our inventory related functions. Even though our monsters really aren't ever going to do any crafting, this is where inventory properties are. So let's put our inventory support, our wrapper functions for it in the same class. And that means I'm going to take some code out of the player class that dealt with inventory and even a little bit out of the game session class that dealt with checking inventory. And we're going to move that into living entity now. Down on lines 244 through 253, I have a remove items from inventory function that takes a list of item quantities. We already have a remove item from inventory that just takes an individual item. This new function takes a list of the item quantity. So we can pass in basically the ingredients property from a recipe, and this will remove all of those items from the player's inventory. And all it does is it checks each item in the list and then eventually calls the remove item from inventory function, the old one that removes an individual item for each item it needs to remove. There's this inner loop on 248 to 251 in case the quantity is more than one. So let's say our granola bar recipe needed two oats, one honey, and one raisins. Then our first item quantity would say it would be the oats item, but it would have a quantity of two. So that's why we need to loop through 248 to 251 twice because remove item from inventory only removes one item. And also on lines 255 through 266, we have this has all items function. We already had this in the player class. 
and we used it to check to see if the player has all the items to complete a quest. But we need to do the same logic to see if the player has all the items to craft a recipe. So we're moving it into the living entity and we're going to use it for both completing a quest and for crafting a recipe item. Because we moved has all these items into living entity, we can go into step three and that's going into the player class and removing has all these items from the player class. It was on lines 57 through 68 and I just deleted those. And also up in our using statements, this originally had a using system collections generic. We don't need that anymore because it was only used by the has all these items function. Now we can go to step four and modify the engine view models game session object. The first thing I'm going to do is in the constructor on lines 134 through 136, I'm going to add the ingredients for making a granola bar to the player's inventory. So we have our create game item 3001, 3002, and 3003 to give them the oats, the raisins, and the honey. And because in the living entity class, we have this remove items from inventory function, we can take that out, we can take that code out of the game session class. It was originally in lines 184 to 191. When the player can complete a quest, then we removed all the quest completion items. And now we can replace that with this one line, 187 now, that's current player, remove items from inventory, quest items to complete. And to craft the items, we have a new function on lines 274 through 298 called craft item using, and we pass in a recipe. The first thing it will do is on line 276, check if the current player has all the items needed, all the recipe ingredients. If it does, it's going to run the code from 277 through 289. If it doesn't, it's going to run 291 through 297, which just raises a message and says you do not have the required ingredients, and it loops through the ingredients and raises a message that says the quantity, and it uses that item name function we created in the item factory to show the name of the item. So in this case, if they didn't have the ingredients to create a granola bar, it would say you do not have the required ingredients, and then it would say one oats, one honey, one raisins. If they do have the ingredients, it's going to run the code from 278 through 288. The first thing it will do is on line 278, remove the items from the player's inventory for the ingredients. And then it's going to loop through the recipe output items. And for each item in the output items, it's going to loop based on the item quantity quantity. So if we say this creates one granola bar, it will just loop through 282 through 287 once. If we say this recipe creates five granola bars, it will loop through this loop five times. And each time in the loop, it's going to create the game item, add it to the player's inventory, and then raise a message that says you crafted one output item name. We could consolidate this so that we only add the items inside the loop, and then we raise the message outside the loop, and we say, you crafted five granola bars. But right now I'm gonna keep it simple and we'll go with this. The final code change is to actually plug this into the UI so we can have the player use this functionality. And we'll go into mainwindow.xaml and on lines 209 to 217, I've added a new data grid template column. It's got a button the content of the button, the text on it says craft. And when the player clicks the button, we're going to call this on click craft function. This is a lot like the buy and sell button that we have in the trade screen works the exact same way. And then we need to write the click event code in main window .cs. That's this new function on lines 69 through 73. On line 71, all we do is get the sender, 
which in this case is going to be the row in the data grid that had the click button. We're going to get its data context. We're going to convert that to a recipe. And then we'll call game session craft item using the recipe, which is going to go through all the other code that we put in. We'll go into here in game session, check to see if the player has all the items, and then either give them an error message and tell them what they need, or go ahead and craft the item. Now we can go ahead and run the game. If we look at the inventory, we have one granola bar, one oats, one honey, and one raisins, because we put all the ingredients in the game session constructor to give them one of each ingredient. If I go into the recipes, we see they know the granola bar recipe, and I click craft, we get a message, you craft one granola bar, and if we check the inventory, now we see there are two granola bars and the ingredients are all gone. They've all been removed. If we go back into the recipes tab and click craft again, now we get the message. You do not have the required ingredients with the list of the ingredients. And if we look in the use combo box, we see we have two granola bars to use because that's what's in our inventory, two granola bars. So it looks like this all works. I know it took a while to get here. It was eight lessons to actually add this in, but now we've done that by using composition over inheritance, using command objects, learning about interfaces, and making our game much more extensible and much easier to work with, at least in my opinion. So once you know this pattern that we're using, you can do this for all sorts of things. We can do this for spells. We can do this for armor and weapons that have special effects. If you're watching the video on YouTube, as always, in the description below the video, there'll be a link to the support page. You can get the source code there, or you can leave any questions and comments, and I'll answer those as soon as possible.